Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Darkest Hour movie thoughts. So, I didn't quite like the design of the aliens. And part of this is, of course, that I don't think we should have ever seen the aliens. I think it's fine that several of them were killed because that... That works, you know, that that was really quite necessary from a storytelling point of view. We had to get to this point where we could defeat them, you know, where the odds didn't seem so completely impossible. But I don't think we should see their faces. And, yeah, I, I don't quite like the, you know, the design either. I think that the scene with the bus, not the entire scene, but once the bus starts moving was a bad idea. I don't think we really needed that, and it just felt a bit forced to have this kind of, and especially with, you know, again, the gun, you know, has to have, you know, it, it, you know, it, it backfired, it, it doesn't quite work. And, yeah, I mean, we already had that. We already had that at the train tracks. And just, you know, the bit of her being held in the air was fine. And her almost being pulled back. Because by then we know that they have these sort of, I don't know, tentacles, I guess, that might be electricity or lighter energy or something, but they don't actually have the ability to disintegrate anyone, you know, it's only, we see that in earlier scenes, you have to be pulled back into contact with, I guess it's the energy shield surrounding them. It protects you, it protects them from damage, unless attacked by one of the electrical guns that kind of look like those proton pack thingies from, you know, Ghostbusters, but whatever. You know, they protect them from damage and, you know, disintegrate anything that they come into contact with. But it's not the tentacles. So the tentacles thingy grabs, you know, her leg and tries to pull her back. And she grabs hold of one of the rods in, you know, the, the bus. And that whole thing works fine. But just that the bus has to be moving and, you know, they have to turn it out of the way of stuff. I don't know. It just felt forced. It felt out of place with the rest of the film. The... I also just don't get... He throws part of, I guess, the shield, or maybe it's just part of the other alien, into its head, and it dies from that. I don't get... What... what I guess it was the shield, because it was from... No, whatever. It was either part of the shield, which I guess is equivalent to throwing a rock at it. What, was there still electricity in it? But yeah, I guess, you know, equivalent to throwing a rock at the head of someone. Or he was throwing a part of one of his deceased brethren at him. You know, I, either way, I don't get how it works. And you know, maybe there's an explanation for it. I love to hear it. It is one of the only negative things I have to say about the movie at all. I liked, yeah, I'm, I'm not a fan of nationalism, but I did like that they had proud Russians here, you know, that it's not, it, in this time of, you know, pro-Western and kind of, you know, just fear of everything outside of the West, I think it was great to have a... And Eastern European characters, several Eastern European characters, proud of where they were from and, you know, wanting to defend their country to kind of say, you know, I mean, it is currently being seen as a very positive quality, especially in that kind of Hollywood, very, you know, mainstream, popular, populist kind of thing. So to have a character from a completely different country, a country that some might you know, mistrust here in the West, and to say they are, they, they have that kind of pride too, because it wasn't seen as something negative in the film. It wasn't shown as something negative at all. I, I have to admit, when I first saw 
the, you know, the Russians and the horse and that whole thing, for a second there, I thought, now that's just silly. And then I realized it actually works. You know, in this movie, they get away with it. They just, they hit the tone perfectly. Because that's the sort of thing, I mean, say it out loud. They are Russians with guns, one of them is on a horse, and they are wearing pieces of metal in, you know, what almost looks like some kind of decorative, you know, war armor kind of thing, you know. It should look silly. It should make us chuckle, but it doesn't. You know, I didn't chuckle. I just, for a second there, I thought, mm, does that really work? But, yeah, and I don't quite get the purpose of the horse. I guess to, you know, my girlfriend suggested it's to move around quickly in case the others were killed, he could ride off or something, but yeah. Anyway, I do perfectly get the purpose of the metal. I also like that the, kind of the, the science of it was halfway kind of just, I think it's sort of this, um, <laughs> and halfway just, oh, right, I know that, you know, like water, you know, leads electricity, and so it's, you know, certain metals, you know, that's just kind of, oh, right, I know that, you know, it wasn't like some character suddenly becomes nuclear physicist and explains the whole thing in, you know, Star Trekky techno battle. No, it's just I uh, I watched it on Shark Week. You know, it's just yeah. I don't know. It it stuck with me. Some just, that really worked. I thought it it felt very organic, and the characters were remained relatable through that. You know, we didn't have the weird science character who was really just there to explain everything. You know. I liked that, you know, several characters really got uh, sort of an arc or at least something to, something to do, you know, they weren't just there waiting to possibly die, you know, Pika actually got to prove herself, you know, they wouldn't let her go along but she followed them and through using Molotov cocktails, I had a, I have a feeling that someone involved with making this movie was really proud of the whole Molotov cocktail thing. Now I heard, you know, conflicting reports of whether that, you know, invention or whatever you want to call it is actually Russian or not, but someone really liked it. And I gotta tell you, if Russian bartenders are that ready to just hurl Molotov cocktails around, I don't think I'm going to a Russian bar anytime soon. But yeah, Pika, you know, using Molotov cocktails, she forced the aliens in, you know, over the water and they fried all three of them. You know, that was great. I did wonder why the heck Sean had not brought a single gun onto the bus. You know, just, he only had the electrical gun. Did they run out of firearms? It seemed like everyone else had at least one firearm, you know, I, what was that? Anyway, other characters, Skylar, when you first see him, you hate the guy. You're thinking, this is gonna be the most obnoxious character in the whole movie. And then you find out that he's gonna stay. And then you, yeah, you, the 3D makes you want to try to punch him in the face. However, and, you know, then he even goes on to get this poor lady killed in the first, you know, 10 or 15 minutes of the movie. But then, you know, he gets confronted with it, and then he's like, well, you know, I hate that I did that, but it gets, you know, it gets the real you out of, you know, this, this kind of crisis thing. More on that in a bit. I like that they gave him a chance to redeem himself, and he took it. You know, he could have... You know, he didn't have to save Sean and Ben when the creatures were heading for them, but he did. You know, he sacrificed himself to save these two people that he really didn't particularly have. He wasn't their friend, you know, but it's not like Sean saving Ben or something like that. But it really, you know, 
that I, I thought that was uh, really great that he he died trying to protect people after having gotten someone killed. You know, it doesn't it doesn't equal out, but you know, I think there is some truth to that. That you know, some people might make a terrible mistake in a crisis and regret it, and then try to do better the next time. And, you know, this kind of redemption kind of thing. That, that really worked, I thought. I... But, but yeah, so... You know, characters... Characters that were changed by the crisis. In the beginning, there was nothing. And then man, then God, anyway. <laughs> yeah, I botched that, didn't I? At first, in the movie, Ben is very in control and very, you know, we're gonna do this. And, you know, and Sean is just like, huh, look at that, you know, just not at all caring. And when, you know, when the crisis starts, it's, you know, Ben is kind of, what are we gonna do? And Sean, you know, a, a great example is the car you know, the cop car, and, you know, Sean is sliding under the car, and Ben is like, what are you doing? I'm doing something, you know, he's taking a risk, he's taking a chance, that's what he does. He is used to, you know, messing things up, so he's, and, and he's kind of comfortable with it by now, so he, you know, he, he does what you might not think of, he does what you know, he doesn't just wait around for something to happen, and he doesn't necessarily always have a perfect plan, but he's gonna risk it. He's gonna see if, you know, something might... And, you know, it's because of him that they're alive after that scene. <laughs> you know, we wouldn't have a movie without that being the case. So... You know, and... Yeah, that's Sean and Ben. Natalie starts out very you know, not very really open towards Sean, and outwardly hostile, you know, but then afterwards she kind of, you know, she, she gets attracted to that kind of, you know, he is really trying to improve things, you know, he's really trying to save them, and she also has this kind of, I don't think she was entirely comfortable you know, before when, you know, this kind of situation, I think she is a bit more adventurous, as seen by her just up and leaving and going to Moscow like that, you know. And, you know, finishing off with Anne, she's very, very comfortable in the more social, you know. She might not like Sean either, but she's not going to show it you know, when they're just partying and whatnot. But once things start going south, she's one of the first to actually say, this is not gonna go well, you know, we should we should abandon these guys. She, you know, it's really only because of Natalie that she actually sticks with them. Because of the bond between Natalie and Anne. And, you know, again, that is kind of, you know, she wants back to something that she can maybe more trust and, you know, a, a situation that she can handle. And without it, she becomes very... I want to say mistrust... She just, you know, she's not sure that these people can be trusted. Actually, I do have one more character to comment on as far as that. Skylar, again, you know, it brings out different things in different people. I think Skylar was always a bit, you know, he was kind of very out for himself, <laughs> obviously, and he also just didn't think that things would go well, and that kind of, that can lead to kind of jerk behavior that he exhibits in parts of the movie. You know, he has the you know, he screws them over on the deal at first, and, you know, later on, he's 
he's constantly talking about we're all gonna die. You know, he is the most outspoken pessimist in the entire group. And, you know, I think the two really go together. He doesn't expect things to go well. So he's gonna take the easy way out. You know, he doesn't, when he sees the light in the, you know, in the window, he doesn't run up the stairs and say, hey guys, look at this. He just crosses the street and tries to get there by himself. Also about the characters, I think it was quite courageous as well as necessary to kill several of them off, including main characters. I had not expected Ben or Anne to die, but it was effective when it happened. You know, when, you know, it's kind of, Anne, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. She keeps expecting it to go horribly wrong. So finally it does, you know, if she had trusted Pika, she might have lived, at least lived longer, but she keeps expecting that this is all going to go wrong, and, you know, it ends up, actually she kind of gets sort of guy killed, if you want to look at it that way. One thing about that scene, I'm not entirely sure how they managed to leave there with the electric gun. I, I saw them pick it up, but I don't get how they could pick it up after Surgai has been disintegrated without, you know, the being attacking them as well. But anyway, you know, and Ben sacrifices himself, and then afterwards we have this not terribly long scene, maybe two minutes, of sort of silence for him, and this, this sort of solemn tone to it, and it it really works. It wasn't just, he died, and, you know, it, he didn't just die, it actually, it affected people. You know, his best friend is left there, and he's, you know, he died, you know, we were friends, and that kind of thing, and Pika is sitting there over on the other side, and she's, you know, she doesn't, I don't think she says a single word about it, but he died because he saved me. You know, I, you know, she feels th there's there's a survivor's guilt kind of thing there. Maybe, in fact, maybe that's why she later runs back to try to save Natalie. You know, she wants to make sure that she can save someone after being saved herself kind of thing, you know. But yeah, you know, you. I didn't see those deaths coming, and, you know, they actually, they, they made an impact. Perhaps Ben's more than Anne's, but, you know, it worked, definitely. The very ending, I like that it didn't really show, you know, we're completely winning. Winning! Because we have tiger blood. But, you know, and, and I, I want to be very clear, I don't think the ending was sequel baiting. I suspect some might call it that, but I really see the ending as saying, this is the only movie we're going to make about this. D deal with it, you know, we're going to feed your imagination, same as we have for most of the movie, you know. We're going to tell you to make up in your own mind what, what's happening here. You know, we're only going to give you a tiny little slice of it, and the rest is up to you to, you know, because we shouldn't see everything. That's not... Good storytelling leaves something up to the imagination of the audience. So that every member of the audience will leave with a different interpretation, a different version. What I do think is that maybe... Maybe it didn't need that very last bit where they, you know, hear over the radio, Oh, we did that, and we did that, we're gonna win. Maybe it should have just ended with the submarine sailing off, you know. I think that last bit was in order to say, we're not making a sequel to this. This is not, you know, it is that kind of, you know, the movie is called The Darkest Hour. 
you know, it is darkest before the dawn. We have this kind of, this is, we, we get very close to extinction in this movie, but we do make it. And we don't need to see anything more than that. We don't need to see the rebuilding. We don't need to see how we actually defeat. You know, this is, this is the one, yeah, th this is the, this shows the time where we figure out how to fight back because the will is there from right away you know to fight back we just have to figure out how to fight back and that's you know sometimes very much the case it, you're, you're faced with impossible odds and there is you know maybe not in real life that there is this one moment and then everything turns obviously sometimes there are more but it's a good you know, storytelling wise, dramaturgically, it is very good to have this kind of this is when it all turned around. You know, we don't need to see the whole war the whole war being won. We just need to, you know, there's there's that line, this is when the time of extinction stopped, this is when the war began. You know, this is when we start fighting back. But yeah, that very last shot might have been a little little bit too much. It might have been slightly too optimistic, but at the same time, I, I really am happy that they didn't have this big, you know, fix all. You know, it just, we're starting to get there. We will eventually get there, but this wasn't it. You know, this wasn't the entire thing. And again, we shouldn't see the entire thing. The, you know, the, this film is showing how we just exactly got through impossible odds and with that you know that kind of that proves that we can eventually completely you know fight them off and win but you know what what we saw and what this was dedicated to showing was how almost impossible it was how impossible it seemed at first, you know, and you know, again, the darkest hour right there in the title. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.